Hey there and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. In today's episode we'll go over some of the methods we use to help clear snow at our property in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. This is a collection of footage we've taken over the last few years showing different ways we've cleared the driveway, paths in the yard, and how we've cleared our backyard hockey rink. I'll go over my experiences using different types of snow blowers and blades in hopes that it gives you some ideas of what might work well at your property. I enjoy plowing snow and had a great time putting this video together and I hope that you enjoy watching it. If you do, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. All of the equipment used in today's episode was purchased by myself and you're going to get my honest feedback and experiences using each type of equipment. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Our property sits in the foothills at about 5,280 feet above sea level, so we get to see our fair share of snow and wind throughout the year. And when we bought the property five years ago, the first piece of snow removal equipment I purchased was a 54 inch wide snow blade to mount on a four wheeler. Now, snow plows or blades come in various shapes and sizes, and they're made to fit a variety of ATVs, UTVs, and vehicles. Um, the blade will raise and lower using the winch on the front of your vehicle, and then the blade will pivot left or right to be able to push the snow in the direction of your choice. In this clip, I'm pushing about eight inches of snow to clear the driveway, which is about 450 feet in length. Now, the beauty of a snow plow is the speed which you can clear the snow at, and this driveway can be cleared in about 10 to 20 minutes or so, depending on the snow depth and its density. The majority of our driveway is gravel, and toward the start of the season, I'll pull some of it up from time to time with the blade, but as the ground freezes and things compact with snow and ice, you'll catch and throw less gravel. Now, blades typically have adjustable skids that can be adjusted to float the edge of the blade above gravel and to help increase the life of your wear bar. Here's my third pass going back down the driveway. And as you push the snow to the side during each pass, it's obviously going to be more snow to plow. But as long as your four-wheeler has good power, it should push it with ease. I'm using a Can-Am Outlander 800 in this video, and it works great for plowing. If you plan on plowing uphill and on steeper terrain, I definitely recommend looking into tire chains to help with traction and when pushing deeper snow. I didn't have them on in this video, but here's a look at the V-Bar tire chains I have on all four tires once I get them on later in the year. As you can see on my old Honda 450 four-wheeler, the chains will make your ATV look and act like a tank. And the windshield on this old Honda was actually a nice feature to help protect you from the wind a little while plowing. One of the downsides, in my opinion, of this specific plow setup is that you're out in the elements. You can get hand warmers on a four-wheeler and a windshield, but otherwise you just have to bundle up and wear ski goggles to stay warm and to keep the snow out of your face. Now, I've seen a lot of UTVs like Polaris Rangers and John Deere Gators with enclosed cabs, and that would be really nice. Another downside about plowing is that the side of the driveway will continue to build up with a ridge of snow as the year goes on, and if it gets really deep, it can get harder to plow as the snow won't really have a place to go. Something I like to do each fall is to place snow markers along the side of the driveway to help me know exactly where the edge of the driveway is when I'm plowing in deep snow and to help guests stay on the driveway if it hasn't been plowed yet. To make it easy to put the snow markers in, I use a 12 inch long 3 8 inch bit to pre-drill prior to putting the marker in the ground. This makes it super easy for the marker to go into the ground and to get it fairly straight. It takes about seven to eight passes to clear the main part of this driveway. And overall, it's a quick, easy, and fun way to clear snow for many homeowners. And if you have a little extra time, head over to your neighbors and plow their driveway or help them shovel. It never hurts to get to know your neighbors and to give a helping hand. Winter does get long, so it's a good idea to have plenty of activities to stay busy. One fun thing we've done is put tracks on the four-wheeler to play around in the snow. And if you're wondering, a plow can still be attached using an extension. Another method I've used to clear snow at the home is using a snow blower on the back of a tractor. The snow got so deep and wind blown toward the end of our first winter at this property that a snow blower was needed. Now this method worked great and it would be a solid setup for many folks with property. The PTO driven snow blower shoots the snow nice and far and is plenty powerful. I liked using a tractor, but after doing some additional research and thinking about the most versatile machine to own, I eventually moved on to a skid steer, which you'll see later. 
We get lots of wind storms and snow throughout the winter, so having snow removal equipment is a necessary investment for us, as it is for many of you. And sometimes our county's plows aren't able to get out until the next morning. So here is my neighbor using her Ford F-250 with a Boss V plow on it to plow the main road so I could get home after an adult hockey league game last winter. And the next morning, the plows were out in full force to open up the road after the big night of wind. Clearing snow can sometimes be more often than I'd like, but the day always starts by lighting the wood stove and then getting ready to go outside. Just like a tractor with a loader, a skid steer with a bucket can clear snow efficiently and works pretty well. There are different sized buckets and you can also get blades, snow pushers, or a snow blower. Now the bucket works fine and you can put the snow into piles around the sides of the driveway. Once that bucket is full, lines of excess snow will be left on each side of it unless you empty the bucket to the side of the driveway periodically. Now this method is a great way to get started plowing with your skid steer, but as you continue plowing, you'll see if that or another solution will be best for your situation. We do paths around the backyard out to the firewood racks, hockey rink, and sheds, and you can see it makes quick work of this. If you do plan on clearing lots of snow, an enclosed and heated cab is definitely something I'd recommend looking into. Uh, here is a view from inside the cab as I'm plowing some real heavy snow up the driveway. Now, if you will be plowing up slopes, you'll want to either have good snow tires or a set of chains. Uh, I have chains on all four tires, and they turn this thing into a tank. Chains are expensive though, and even one pair on the front or back wheels will make a huge difference. One safety tip I'd highly recommend is to get a strobe style safety hazard light to help others see you and slow down if you're on the road or near it. This light was about $35. It has a magnetic base to stick to the top of the skid steer and you can run the cord into the cab and plug it into the cigarette lighter. There are about eight different light functions on mine and it's well worth it. After plowing for a while, I ended up deciding a snowblower would be necessary because of the amount of snow and blowing snow we get, so I did quite a bit of research to figure out a snowblower that would work well with my machine. Now, I couldn't find anything used on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, so I did end up purchasing a new one from a company out of Minnesota named SkidPro. They make all sorts of attachments to fit any skid steer, and they're not brand specific. And I figured a Minnesota company knows how to deal with snow and would make a good machine, so I went with them. My skid steer has standard flow and not high flow hydraulics, but the cool thing is that the manufacturers can build the blowers with different motors to work best with your machine. If you are interested in any of the snow equipment or want to learn more about them, I have links to everything in the description below. We didn't have a ton of snow when the new blower arrived, but there was some old compacted snow to try it out. And right away, I could tell it would have plenty of power and it was gonna be a good tool to have out at the property. As the season progressed, we started to get some new snow and colder temperatures. One thing I do when the temps are near 10 degrees Fahrenheit and colder is to plug the machine in so the block heater helps the skid steer start easier on real cold days. Here I'm doing a path in the backyard through about 13 inches of snow. This specific blower is seven feet wide, has a 26 inch tall intake, and weighs 990 pounds. The standard flow version works on machines from 15 to 25 gallons per minute. Snow blowers are great because they get the snow up and out of the way, unlike a blade would, and with the amount of compacted, wind-driven snow we get and drifts, this is something that's definitely necessary where we live. You can adjust the chute to the left and right depending on where you want the snow to go and what way the wind is blowing, and all this can be done using the controls inside your skid steer. Depending on the brand of snowblower and skid steer you have, you may need what's called a CAN bus controller to make the blower talk with the electronics and controls.
The snowblower makes quick work of our driveway and turnaround spot with just a few passes, and it has skids at the bottom to help keep the blower from picking up gravel. It takes a little practice to get the blower at the right angle when learning to use it, but after a while, you'll get a good feel for it. And I picked a little gravel up in this area, but if you do, it's not a big deal, and you can simply adjust the height and angle to best fit your situation. Another machine we use to clear the deck and other parts of the property is a 30 inch wide self-propelled snowblower. It makes clearing deep snow off the deck super easy. To get it up and down from the deck, I use a tri-fold ATV ramp. And if you follow the channel, you'll know that we've done a backyard hockey rink the last four years. I grew up playing hockey and it's been a great way to bring everyone together and to keep busy during those long winter months. Um, if you're interested in learning about the rink, you can check that out in the description below. The rink needs to be cleared every time it snows, and this old Aryan snowblower that came with my house has been a real workhorse. It starts on about the first pole darn near every time, and it does a great job removing the snow from the rink. It takes a lot of help to keep the rink clear, and here's my wife Britt getting it ready for a group of skaters, and then my dad helped out another night when we had some nieces and nephews stopping over to skate. I've been real impressed with the advancements in electric tools over the years, and my buddy Ryan, who lives up in the mountains at 7,800 feet above sea level, recommended trying an Ego snowblower. Uh, so my dad ended up ordering a two-stage Ego blower, and we tried it out for the first time on the rink. There isn't much snow in this video, but it has worked great for them to clear their deck and front walkway, and it doesn't need any oil changes or gas, which is pretty cool. Ego also makes a single stage snowblower, which is light and easy to maneuver, but not self-propelled. I found this one on Craigslist and figured I'd get it to see how it would work at the house. In my experience, it's not great for super wind-driven compacted snow or if you have a gravel driveway, but I could see it working perfect for the average homeowner, uh, their driveway, sidewalks, or deck. One other piece of equipment we use to clear the hockey rink or the concrete portion of our driveway if there's just a dusting of snow is a power broom. This is one of the best tools for prepping before resurfacing the ice, but it also works well for clearing small amounts of snow on paved driveways. If you already own a UTV like a Polaris Ranger or a John Deere Gator, you might look at putting a snowblower on it if you want a larger snowblower for your property. I bought this 60 inch wide snowblower for the hockey rink since sometimes the snow is too compacted for my self-propelled push machine. And then the skid steer is so heavy that the weight of the machine compacts the snow to the ice, which then it's hard to get off. And uh, so I thought this could be the perfect machine for the job. An ATV or UTV blower mounts underneath the front of your ATV. You need a winch on the vehicle to be able to raise and lower it. And this particular blower is made by a company named Massimo and priced around $2,500 when this video is posted. This has a 13 horsepower, 420 cc motor with electric start and a remote control for the chute and the auger. Your ATV battery supplies the power for the electronics on the blower. Overall, this machine has a powerful motor. It works well and throws snow quite far. I did, however, find it to be a pretty heavy machine for my four-wheeler, including my Can-Am Outlander 800. Even with chains on all four tires doing the driveway or the rink, it can be hard to maneuver and turn with that big blower on the front. I do feel there's room for some improvement in the quality of the switch and a few of the parts as I have had to fix a few things. So as long as you're okay with tinkering a bit, this could be a good machine for you as it's one of the most affordable UTV blowers I've found. That being said, it has been a mechanically sound piece of equipment for me, and I think it would work well for a UTV like a Polaris Ranger, a John Deere Gator, uh, another UTV, or possibly a really good sized ATV. As you can see, it does a good job clearing the snow off this 120 foot long by 60 foot wide ice skating rink with about 13 inches of snow on it. Um, now there are a few different manufacturers for these types of snow blowers, so do your research on YouTube to see what you can find that would work well for your needs. I wanted to show you one more time what I like to call the beast of all snow blowing equipment at our home because this will go through pretty much anything we put in front of it. It's what I use most for the driveway, for the hockey rink when it gets really deep, and for the neighbor's driveways when they need a little extra help, uh, especially toward February and March when the snow is so windblown and deep. This has just been a rock solid machine, and I'm a big fan of skid steer snowblowers no matter what brand it is, 
Plus, uh, being in a cab certainly makes the whole experience much better as you're warm and out of the elements. Most skid steer snowblowers are made to work with about any brand of skid steer. The controls used to run them might vary, but that's about it. And uh, for me, my throttle is on the right side and that controls the power to the skid steer and the auger. And then the two joysticks on each side adjust the blower and then have buttons and switches to move the blower and to control its auger and chute. Since this model of skid steer is about 10,000 pounds with the blower, I don't use chains on the ice because they dig in quite a bit and make imperfections in the ice. As long as the ice is frozen solid all the way through though, I notice minimal cracking from the weight of it, um, but I still only use it on the ice as a last resort after huge snowstorms or high winds. Here's a storm where the snow blew in so hard that it was like walking on concrete once the storm was over. If it weren't for tractors and skid steers, I'm not quite sure what I'd do, but you can see that it's no match for the blower. I've seen companies that make snow blowers with double augers, and I think they're pretty cool, but for my situation, and probably a lot of yours, I don't think it's necessary, and the price is quite a bit more as well. The snowblower I have is currently in the $8,000 range and it's worth it for me, but if you aren't in a hurry and can find something used, you might save a few thousand dollars. I didn't go over tractor blowers much at all in this video, but the one I had on the Kubota worked great. I just decided a skid steer would be better for the attachments I'd be using and the landscaping projects I had coming up. I also like how the snowblower raises and lowers, so if you have a big pile of snow to get rid of, you can go at it at all different heights. <laughs> Something we do in the fall to help minimize drifting is to strategically place snow fences around the property. This past winter was the first time we set them up and they made a significant difference in where the snow drifted to help make snow removal easier. If you do a lot of snow removal, you will need to get gas or diesel from time to time. One thing I've done to save on trips to the gas station, and so I don't have to fill up all those yellow diesel cans, is I got a 50 gallon fuel tank and I put it on a pallet so it can be lifted in and out of the truck. I basically take the pickup to the gas station, put in 50 gallons, and then unload the tank when I get home. I got a manual pump for the tank, so filling up the skid steer is a quick and easy process. In the winter, I use an anti-gel supplement to prevent the diesel from gelling up, and this stuff keeps the diesel engine running great even in the coldest of temperatures. In addition to snow removal, I have a competition with my buddy on how many vehicles we pull out of the ditch each winter, and with the Bobcat, I've been able to help quite a few folks with ease. Snow removal is a big part of our winter, and it's what enables us to get up the driveway, to do things around the backyard, and to keep the hockey rink cleared. And we found from our backyard rink that if you build it, they will come, and all that hard work has been worth it each winter. My hopes are that this video gives you a few ideas about snow removal options for those of you who live in the country or up in the mountains and that the tips about snow markers, fuel, and snow fences might be helpful. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and that it helps you in figuring out what snow removal equipment might work best for your home or your property. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching and take care.